Hello and welcome to another Flight Simulator X video. Um, so in this flight, um, we're actually currently at Benbridge where we arrived from last time um, and we're going to make the flight um, slowly back up towards the north, towards Wellsbourne, um, but the plan for this flight is actually to fly to Gloucester um, and we'll land at Gloucester but we'll also do an RNAV approach into Gloucester. Now the weather's absolutely beautiful so according to the METARs on Sky Demon, um, at Benbridge, the wind is coming from 120 um, degrees at five knots, so not particularly strong. And at Gloucester, um, I believe it's around 250 degrees, and again, about five knots. Um, so it will allow us to do the RNAV approach for runway 27 at Gloucester. Now, in the real world, I should have been flying a plane down to Leon Solon's day for the bank holiday to spend um, by the seaside, but unfortunately, um, Due to the outbreak, we haven't been able to do that. So um, hence um, this flight here. So um, what we're going to do is get everything started up, um, get our uh, flight plan into the GPS um, and get going on our way. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll go from there. So first of all, I'm just going to open up our little side panel here to let some air in, which is always quite nice. Um, so we know hatches and harnesses are all secure, which is fine. Uh, the parking brake is on, that's great. Um, radio and avionics are off, that is absolutely fine. So instruments are all fully legible, which is great. And I've just put the Q&H in there as well on the altimeter, that's why that jumped. So flying controls, we have full and free movement, which is great. Um, trimmers are set to neutral which is fine and again we should take them all the way up and down but in the flight sim i'm not going to do that flaps there's one stage two stage three stage and reverse that's working fine cabin air controls are all off um, which is fine um, mixture so we're just going to operate the mixture fully rich and then make fluid, that's perfect. Throttle, oh yeah, and we'll put it about a quarter. Um, throttle friction is finger loose at the moment. Carb heat, we'll just operate, that's fine. Close that back off. Um, so now we will put the master switch on. Um, that is on. We're going to just swing the ignition round all the way around. That's great. Circuit breakers are all in. There's no issues there, which is brilliant. Fuel, we're currently on the left tank. Um, probably, yes, we will start on the left and then take off on the right. So looking at that, that'll be fine. Um, primes, we're just going to put four primes in. There's four. And now all things um, going well, we should be able to start up. There we are, we're starting up. We'll just wait for the RPM to rise and hopefully we should go up to about 1200. So I might just need to give it a little bit of a nudge on the throttle. That's at 1200 now, so that's fantastic. So I'm just going to close that up again for the time being. Um, so throttles are all start to warning lights are out, so that's absolutely fine. Oil pressure, we are in the green and rising, which is great. Uh, let me just put on the pito and uh, ammeter should be working away. There we are, that's perfect, yeah, that's fine. Suction gauge is between well, around four, so that's absolutely fine as well. Um, so we'll just operate each magneto. We should have a slight drill. Go to both. Get the pickup. And get a slight drop back to both that's perfect so let's put the um, radios on back to standby that's better so that's all set so I'm just going to get this um, 
syncing with Sky Demon as well. Um, so at Benbridge, we're actually going to be taking off on runway one two because that is actually the direct direction rather the wind is coming from. So we're um, kind of perfectly down the runway, uh, and then obviously we'll make a left turn out um, and start making our way to Gloucester. So what we can do is let's just put Gloucester onto here. Oh, oops, not too far. Uh, B J. So that should take us direct direct to Gloucester. Now, one of my um, other plans, if you'll let me do this, let me just see. I'm putting it here. Sam, which is actually uh, located on um, Southampton's airfield, gone past him. There we are, there's Sam, so let's just book that in. Think about that for a second, and we'll just put the VOR in for the United Kingdom, um, otherwise, it would make a long trip to um, go via. The US. Now, the other thing I want to do, because I've planned this on Sky Demon, so normally I'll just be looking at Sky Demon and Fly Simulator, but I've decided we'll actually go overhead Kemble as well. So, let me just get the. Um, so it's EGBP for Kemble. So let's just put that in. Yeah. Let's just put Hey, there's Kemble. That's Kemble. Lady knows what I want to do. If I can just clear that, let's cancel that a second. This is what let me do this. Is can I get rid of? Yep, that should be fine. So, starting there, off to there, off to there, off there, and go to there. So, in theory, if we now clear that, oh no, sorry, let me just do that. Go no. Press the cursor there we are, so we can return to there. Is what should happen now if we zoom I'll go the way, sorry. We should have a nice track. Can't see it very well. We'll have to see how well this works, but that should in theory get us on our way via Sam um, off to yeah, start there, there, 20 miles there to there, and should end up um, there, fingers crossed, um, at Gloucester. Uh, now, obviously, that's direct, so en route to Gloucester, we will actually have to um, go for the RNAV procedure, so that again would be slightly different than we fly direct to Gloucester. Um, but let's get our taxi going, let's get in the air, and um, we'll go from there. So we'll keep it on the speed because it is very easy to fly along here. from the taxiway here we'll just do some of our normal checks check all the rotor is working correctly the brakes are working correctly that's fine we'll also just check this and do a slight adjustment only slight that's about right I'm happy with that. that's fine the other thing we will do um, is let's just put the nav lights on the beacon. I should have done that before starting to taxi but um, yes there's just no excuse, should have done that before taxiing but not to worry.
before joining the runway here, we will actually do our um, takeoff check. So what I'm going to do is, because we're going to have to backtrack anyway, so I'm going to do a full turn round there as best I can into the wind. Um, and then is what we'll do is just put the parking brake on. So let's just do our checks. So parking, brake, parking brake is on, throttle is at 1200. Better. I'm just going to change the fuel tank. Off doesn't help, that'll stop it actually working. Um, engine T's and P's are all in the green, everything looking okay. We'll bring the throttle up to 2000 now. Brakes are holding, which is good. Car beats. Not that fully. You got a slight drop, but you do. That's back up, that's great. So we'll just break the magneto, so should have a slight drop, we do. Back. Should have a slight drop, we do. Such a gauge is between three and five, that's fine. Ammeter is charging, that's good. Engine T's and P's are all the limits, and we should set the throttle to idle now. And we should have a nice idle without any cutouts, which we do, which is fantastic. So we'll go back up to 1200. That's brilliant. So trimmers are all set for takeoff in neutral, that's fine. Throttle fiction is finger tight. Mixture is fully rich. Magnetos are on both. Master switches is on. Pito we don't require. Primer is locked. Fuel is on right tank. Fuel pump is going on. There we are, that's better. Fuel pump. Flaps. And required, we've got all of these set, that's okay. Heading very roughly set, okay. Happy with that, that's fine. Radio and avionics all tuned in and set up. Hatches are all secure, harness is all secure, car heat is cold, and controls full and free movement. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, that's great. So what we'll do as well is now we'll put strobe on and that's perfect and we'll also set our transponder to squawk which is great. Okay so we're set to backtrack now. Now one of the things I will just do, I'm just going to check on Sky Demon, um, is Southampton VOR. Um, is 113350. So 113350. If we move that over, in theory, that should start to pick up there. And is what we can do now on Skydown as well is if I select the track. So according to that, from Bembridge to Sam, the course heading is 335. So if I, um, now this is obviously direct. Um, but in theory, if I was going oh, too far, patience. There we are, 335. In theory, that's roughly where our line should be. Should everything fail, that should take us to um, the Sierra Alpha Mike VOR. Um, so, okay, so right, so what we're going to do is line up. I'm going to continue my turn to port. Um, only because otherwise we'd end up going off the runway and possibly hit that sign there. So um, let's do that and bring that round here. Last to go, we come round and then we'll backtrack um, on the runway um, for takeoff on runway 1-2. So we're going to backtrack to the starboard. If anyone ever wants to know how to remember port and starboard, because I could never remember, and then someone told me a really easy tip. Um, left has four letters, 
and port has four letters, so port is left. Now, there's far more logic behind it than that, but just for trying to remember it, if you just remember left is four letters, port has got to be left then. Um, and that's, that's how you remember, so starboard then is obviously right. And that's kept me in good stead because I said I could never ever remember them. slow down now and then we'll do a full 180 there we are so come around and try and get lined up nicely around there That's all, That'll do for this. That's perfect. So the other thing I will actually do um, very quickly is just tune one one three three five on this. In theory, as soon as you can pick up the Sam VOR, we should also assume it's got DME. That's the other thing as well on Sam VOR. I'm not sure. I haven't checked, but. Hypothetically, if it has, we'll get a um, multiple mile reading on that as well. So, all engine T's and P's are in the green, everything's happy, everything's set. Um, I'm happy with all of that. All okay. Yep, that's fine. Right, here goes then. Do is just close our little window here so I know what to think about. Oh, sorry, we've already closed. We're sounding more noisy than normal, and hence why I thought it was open. So, so what we are going to do is probably climb up to 3,000 feet um, and then head off. Um, so we can see already yet, so the Southampton VOR is picking up at the moment. We can also see our line um, of bodies off centre. Um, that means the track should actually be taking off. See, above that, we've got the GPS track anyway. Uh, so you can see there, we're sort of going completely away from where we should be going. Uh, so, what we'll do now is we'll start our turnouts. Support or left. Uh, goodbye, the Isle of Wight. So the idea as well with a VOR, um, as you can see I've said it's 335, is it has radials that come on. So you pick a radial that you want to track. So as you can see, it's saying that I need to keep turning left to pick up the 335 radial. Um, so if I keep turning to the left, eventually that radial track into the centre, which is where you want to be, because then I will be I'm trying to chase the radial at the moment, I'll need to be making a turn to the right to then set me properly on that radio. So what we'll do is, we'll fly this heading at the moment, she's going to due 
west. Um, just to get up to about 3,000 feet. And then we should see that that radar starts coming in. You can actually probably see it's moving it's very slowly now. And then what I'll do is probably when that's about there now, you don't want to leave your turn until the right in the centre, otherwise you'll end up chasing it back the other way. Uh, if I start my turn to 335 now, just a slow turn, in theory, that will track the 335 radar, and it might be that I've left the turn just a little too late. We're going to think we'll be okay. I said, with wind and everything else, to be honest, you can't. Uh, none of this is ever just something you set and then don't have to think about. Uh, I said, I've let my altitude creep over 3,000 feet tomorrow. I'm uh, tracking this VO1. Oh, that's actually worked out quite well. So, what we'll do, set that there. And actually, to be honest, 3,300 feet doesn't really matter too much. So, uh, what I am going to do at the moment is just try and set this. So, um, this is the only problem with trying to get on the flight simulator. It's a lot harder to hold the joystick and so forth and so on while you do it. So, let's just put the auto on. And what we'll do is we'll, try, we'll do a heading board 335. So, let me just cycle that across. We'll let me, there's heading. So, in theory, that should start to hold the 335 heading now. So the other thing we want to do is an altitude hold as best we can. This is one of the beauties of having an autopilot, which I just don't have in the plane. I fly myself. Is you can do both those things, and it makes life so much easier. So as you can see here, our VOR rating is just slightly off to the left, but you can see on the GPS track as well, we're also slightly off to the left. So if I was to bring that heading round very slightly into that direction. And saying we need to trim up because obviously we're losing height. I said the Miss Autopilot on the A2A 180 Cherokee uh, doesn't have trim control so you do have to do this yourself. Uh, it's a bit, a bit more boost on the panel as well because that will also negate the need to trim up as it will bring the power up and hence there'll be a little bit more lift. So that's not a bad cruise speed, about 5, 10 knots. Uh, and the one that's trimmed down now, so as it's picked up, we'll start to gain altitude. This is where I'll we'll just put the throttle back slightly. This is where you, you do need to be able to sort of not only just trim the aircraft, but trim the but also throttle as well, depending on thermals and all sorts of bits and pieces so we're tracking the end so in fact what I'm going to do is just pop this out again at the moment and bring up our flight plan so we know um, Sam is 332 and we're currently tracking about 331 which is why that radar is drifting off because we're already to the uh, right hand side of it anyway, so if I bring that round a little more, uh, that radial should start to come in again, and then we can obviously turn onto that. And we can see, interesting enough, that flight plan information, I don't know why is that's the case, but that flight plan information isn't updating. Unless, I wonder if it's because I've done this, I'm going direct there before flying these. I did wonder that actually. I'm just surprised. Yes, I think that's exactly what I've done. Um, so, anyway, right, well, we can play with that while we've got the autopilot set, to be honest. So, we actually need to clear this entire flight plan and start again and put EGBJ as the last um, point. Um, so, I can see at the moment we're currently 10 miles from Sam, and when we Get to Sam and just have a look on Skyview, and we want to then track 
328 is our next one. So that is correct, actually. So, yeah, it's, it's going to take us one way and then back out again. So let me see if I can correct this anyway. Let's see what we can do. So let's just clear that. Uh, yes. Let's just clear that. Okay. Yes. Let's just clear that. Okay. Yes. Cause it's a little bit of a, a dicky fit, I'm not quite sure why. Ooh, what's going on here? Let's just. Oh, no, it's had an absolute fit. Now, I've never seen you do this before, to be honest. Um, which means, is what I'm going to do is a complete turn off of the avionics just to see if we can um, sort this out. So this is kind of some real world flying um, experience. So it looks like turning that off actually took the autopilot out, so we might have to, yeah, so let's, let's just do our heading hold again. Okay, we're going to go out altitude hold again. There we are, altitude hold on. So we've got 7.3 to run. No, that is still absolutely... Um, you see, it looks like it's on a permanent cycle at the moment. So I won't move the maps. Let's just see if it calms itself down at all. Very odd, I don't know what's going on here. Just gone absolutely haywire. Hmm. I was hoping the power off would reset this completely, but obviously not. Um, look. Let's see. So we've got six miles to Sam. I don't know whether they're on the nav column on this one or not. Um, no, let's just pull that out so we can see which one's gone off. Autopilot's still on, so it's definitely not that one then. Um, yeah, it looks like it's not a happy chappy at all, is it? Oh, there's me changing the view. While I'm trying to press some keys at the same time. So we've got four miles to Southampton. We know our track is going to be 228. Um, as you can see, as you get closer to the VOR, um, the radio will become far more sensitive. So looking at Sky Demon, um, even though I'm pretty much back on track for Sam, because this radio is slightly out, uh, it's saying that I need to turn left and it gets more and more dramatic as you get closer. Seems a bit more trim down by the looks of it. So it's a shame. This is a real shame about this because this is kind of what you need to do your RNAV approach. So I'm actually debating I see something like it's a permanent cycle. I've got no way to reset it that I'm all out of. Let me just, this is the wonders of Google and actually being in a flight simulator. Let me just have a look on the Mindstar website and see if there's a way. Mindstar GNS fourth virtually reset. Oops, I'm going to do it there. 
still flashing away. Um, mm, I don't know. See, but this, these are the sort of things that happen while you've got to carry on flying the plane. You should still be looking, I mean, if you probably notice, I spent a huge amount of time in the cockpit there dive, well, trying to diagnose this issue. And you should do that. You should still be looking outside, um, looking for other aircraft, watching your navigation. Again, this is where one of the uses of GPS and SkyD does come in. It gives you that facility. Um, to do other things because you have got visibility around it. It still doesn't help you with spotting other aircraft that are flying around. Um, so it is critical that you keep your lookout um, and again in a simulator you can get away with that but you should never do that in the real world. So we're pretty much I think looking at this we probably want to come left very slightly As you can see, as I mentioned about the VOR radio, it's gone very dramatic out. Even though we're only one nautical mile away, um, so that should hopefully put us on a nice track up towards Kemple now. So let me have a look on um, Sky Demon and see what else we can tune in for us. Look at chemical information. Ah, oh, so that's interesting. So, according to the chart, um, Kemble is 44 miles from the Honolulu VOR on a bearing of 200, or not bearing, rather a radial of 200. Um, so, I actually have. Um, I don't have only chip in. Let's just put this in and see if this works. If we go to 113 and it's 650. Right, let's switch that over. I'll also put it in here again. I don't know whether it'll have distance measurement equipment or not. Yes, it's saying there, there we are, we're 82 miles away um, from the Honolulu VOR. So, in theory, now, if I dial in 200 on here, so although we're getting um, distance measurement, we're not actually seeing the signal because you can see I've moved that. Actually, have no movement at all uh, whatsoever on this. Um, you can also tell by the red flag there that we're not certainly seeing any information. Um, but that's not to worry. What we'll do is we'll leave it like that. In theory, that should track us to Kemble. And it's what I'm, I think I'm actually going to do now. So, again, a bit of real world um, flying here. Because of the issues we've got with the GNS, um, being able to complete an RNAV at Gloucester is not going to be possible because we just don't have the technology. Um, so, obviously, it's a beautiful day. I could just go and land at Gloucester, uh, and that would be that. But I think is what we're going to do. We're actually going to land at Kemble, uh, which is our, old, our alternate airfield for this trip. Um, so we'll land at Kemble. That will give us obviously the opportunity to reset all of the issues uh, we have with the um, GNS. Um, and we could go from there. Now, again, ideally, what we'll be able to do on the GNS um, is put in another VOR radio um, so we can kind of triangulate the position. And then, as we track towards both of those, that puts us direct over Kemp. We have no GPS whatsoever in the plane, we we'll were completely unsure of where we were. However, not only do we have a secondary working VOR, but also I have SkyD working, so I know exactly where I am. Um, so let me just have a look at the aircraft, sorry not aircraft, the airfield plate for Kemble, um, just to see what we need to know. So the METAR says wind 280 at 3 for Kemble, ok, 280 at 3, um, airfield, let's just have a look at the chart. So, 
So they have a runway 0826, so we will be landing runway 26. Again, in the real world, you'd be speaking to ATC or the Pfizer or whatever type of um, radio communications they have at Cyrus 80 or something else. So you'd actually be able to find out all the information, which should also tell you um, the landing runway and so forth and so on. But because I'm doing this without um, ATC and so forth, Working this off the Metar. So, we'll be landing, landing runway 26 um, at Kemble. Kemble's a fantastically long runway, nearly 2,000 metres, so um, plenty of space to do. Um, not only bad landing, but to try it again without actually having to go around. Uh, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. Um, so, yep, yeah, so that's what we'll work towards now, and we'll fly on to Kemble. So according to Sky Demon, we've got another 43 miles to Kemble um, with an ETA of approximately 12 minutes past 4. Um, and obviously because we've gone to daylight saving time now, normally we work on Zulu time, which is basically GMT. Um, that works fine. So the ETA on Skydeep is actually 12 minutes past three, but that's actually based on Zulu time. Um, so you just have to be careful when you're booking into airfields and whatnot that you, if you do use Zulu, you have to use an hour previous, um, or you can tell them uh, which is standard time, but you have to make it clear that it's when you're using uh, local time. Um, so yeah, so we will uh, fly along. We just to trim down some of the Oh, and look, I just noticed, just as I was trimming down, that the VOR uh, came in. So, in theory, this is saying that we need to fly right to find the, um, to track that radio, which would be absolutely correct. Because what we should find is that as we, oh, it's gone again, so it's, it's very, it's so far off in the distance. Uh, because what we should find is as we continue our flight towards Kemple, that VOR line will slightly start to track into the centre again as we saw previously. Um, so we'll carry on flying, like I said, we've got Sky Dean and we've got a direct track to Kemple at the moment. Um, in fact, I don't think Kemple have an ending. No, they don't. She's got an ending lost for one three three one so again we could actually tune in three three one on here and again just gives us three three one and what we should find is when that starts to pick up and this will point direct to the airfield so again if all of a sudden the weather was to change dramatically and Kemble became unavailable, uh, we could use the NDB at Gloucester just to get us directly to the airfield um, as NDB's point to be a specific, basically, um, tracking on the radio aid, uh, whereas VORs are always pushing out radials and um, you follow a specific radio. It's I won't say it's very rare, I mean, in my flight, my real world flying, I joined obviously with GPS was hugely predominant, so actual tracking of VORs is very rare. And I've actually started doing it more now I've had my license and been flying for a good you know, 100 hours. And as something a bit more interesting, and you have a little bit more capacity in your brain to work these things out. Whereas when you first start off flying, um, actually just flying the aircraft is um, tough enough. Um, so, I do like tracking the VOR radio, or at least having them dialed in, should anything awful happen. As I said, just like this happened on this flight where the GNS starts playing up, um, you're not all of a sudden scrambling around trying to work out what's going on, because um, that is really the most dangerous time, um, is when things aren't going as you hope they should be going, um, and then you're sort of fighting fires. Um, so yeah, so let's um, let's leave this all to track along. As I said, according to Skydeam, we've got 36 miles to Kemp, also not too far. Um, we'll slowly 
um, probably in the next 10 15 miles start and descent down. Now, one of the things I need to check is Kemble's at 436 feet, and because we're actually far on QA, so I'm just going to check the basic QA. So, no, the QA hasn't changed. Um, so, our circuit height, I would suspect Kemble will be uh, a circuit 1000 feet they normally are. Again, you would have actually done this as part of your pre flight um, planning. Um, so you'd have all of the airfoil plates printed off for Turner, main airfoil, so forth and so on. Um, obviously, I've not done that because it's flight simulator, but um, it doesn't make it a good thing. Um, so let's just have a look at the previous plates on this, as I do subscribe to the previous plates on Skydeep as well. Um, and this gives well, I think a bit more information. So yes, so circuit height is a thousand feet. Um, it's a right-hand circuit on runway 08, a left-hand circuit on runway 26. So that would mean if we were in the circuit, all turn would be to the left. Um, so that's fine. Um, we do have a small noise abatement area for Kemble um, on runway 26. Again in the flight simulator these you don't have to comply with at all but real world um, you need to so it kind of makes the approach to runway 26 slightly offset so the base leg is a kink really um, we might try and fly that i'll see because this is the um, orbix eu england scene um, it's not a direct direct rather terrain map um, is they make some assumptions, so it might be that the, uh, um, the village we're supposed to avoid, or well, Kemble Village in fact, isn't really very well depicted on this scenery, uh, or in the right place, but we'll, uh, we'll have a look and see if we can do that and at least fly it correctly. Uh, also, the beauty of Sky Demon is that it would actually um, put up a, I'll call it a see-through um, traffic pattern for Kemble as you approach the airfield. So um, it makes it very easy to fly traffic but also see the was abatement areas, um, whereas normally you'd just be reliant on your map that you carry with you um, or with your pre-flight planning. Um, so it's all of the, I call it, the modern of flying these days. Um, so what I am going to do, I'm just going to adjust our uh, travel. Actually, what we want to do. Again. So what I'm going to do, is to bring the power back very slightly, is what I should actually do as well, is probably one of that check. So we can see here, we've got, you don't, these gauges aren't hugely reliable, but they're enough reliable to say that we've actually used more fuel in the right tank than the left, and that would be correct, because we've been flying the right tank since we actually took off. So what we will do, and one thing I forgot to do is actually turn off the fuel pump. So normally when we reach, um, Altitude that we're having and climbed out, we turn off the fuel pump um, as we would no longer require that. But as it's on, I'm not going to put it back on because normally we would to change tanks, go to the left tank, try not to turn the fuel off, which I did there. Everything's all happy, engine T's and P's are all looking okay, we've had no dropout. So now we can turn the fuel pump off. I said that should have been off, but that is a bit slack flying by me. So we've got 64 miles from the um, Connolly VOR, and you can see again that has just picked up again. Um, it's uh, gone again. Yeah, so we're right on the edge of um, its range here. So routing. So what I'm going to do on just Sky Demon is do change our routing now to take us to Kemble, um, and that will remove parts for our next leg to Gloucester rather. This is the joys of trying to do spy while flying. 
and just try this. See, this is one of those flights where everything isn't working as you're supposed to. It won't let me actually move. Oh, there we are. I used to move the waypoint now. There we are. That's better. So let's just go to routing for Kemble. I'm going to land here. So there we are. So that's set us up now for Kemble. So Sky Demon knows. So that will also help prompt for um, various joins and whatnot as we get closer. So we've got um, approximately uh, 26 miles to Kemble. We know the circuit height is 1,000 feet, uh, but that's based on QFE, so that should be 1,450 feet uh, based on Q&H, which is fine. Um, and we also know it's left-hand circuits. Sorry. As per the Pooley's plate. Um, so, what we'll probably do, because the left hand circuit would actually be kind of our side of the approach, I'll probably set up for downwind join. Uh, and I said there's various ways of joining uh, yeah, the effort overhead joints and all sorts of bits and pieces, but because of the way we are. Um, Coming in. Now, I should say, let me read that very good point. And some airfields actually specifically want you to join in a specific way. I actually think Kemble um, wants an overhead join. Yes, all fixed wing GA traffic to join overhead. And that's so um, basically the pilots can sequence uh, into the circuit tra and already traffic that's flying. Now, again, I'm going to cheat this slide. I'm not going to do an overhead. But the actual airfield plate specifically says that you have to do an overhead join. So that's what you would have to do in the real world. Um, I remember that, I only remember that from last time I went to Kemble and uh, read that on the chart. Uh, but this is why, with all of your pre flight planning, you have to have read all of the charts, understood all of the joining procedures. Some airfields actually want to phone them up uh, to actually discuss how to join if you've never been to an airfield before. Um, and so forth and so on. So, unfortunately, as much as flying is truly amazing, even for what I would say is a one hour flight, even if you just went for a local bimble around, actually, you may have spent an hour to two hours planning that flight before even setting off. Then, when you get to the airfield, you've got to do all the aircraft checks, um, and so forth and so on, for possibly another hour. The flight itself, obviously now, when you get back, obviously you're shutting down a lot quicker and whatnot. But this is why whenever I go flying in for an hour or so, it's half a day to the whole day gone. Uh, I don't know, I enjoy it so much, it's worth it uh, for every second. But please don't think if you're going out for an hour's flight, uh, it's just the trip to the airfield that takes up that little bit of time. Uh, there's so much more involved. Twenty miles to go. It'll be interesting to see um, if this starts to come in correctly at some point. Uh, just yeah, definitely two hundred degrees, forty-four. So in theory, when that's reading forty-four nautical miles, we should be over the airfield. Uh, if this is all set up correctly. And I said it's what you would actually do if you hadn't got any GPS, you would be you would fly to the right to pick up the Now the other thing I should say actually is this is pointing uh, away from the VOR. So you have to be careful uh, with the radio if you're tracking because obviously a radio runs in either direction so the 200 degree radio recipient pull um, would be uh, zero two zero sorry brain have to work there uh, 
So you have to be very careful because they point in both directions. And you can be tracking this for a very long time and never ever come across Kemble. Um, so yeah, there's a lot, a lot that goes into it. So we're kind of 10 miles away now, roughly. According to the DME, but I know Skydeam is saying mostly 17 miles away. Now, this could be that um, I've got this delay on Skydeam with flight simulator. So what I'm going to try and work out now is I can see some airfields around us. I'll try to work out exactly where we are, if we are, and um, where we should be. So, in theory, I'll put that there. Put that there as well. If that's line, um, I think that's how you pronounce it. Because that would match the track we're on at the moment. Um, I don't know what airfield that is down there. Let's just have a look to see if our GNS is still playing C so and so. Yep, there it is. Beautiful day for flying. I've got a little bit of time yet, uh, so still got about 14 miles to our destination. Let's just pop outside and do a quick flat ground. Looks like we've got one of those um, sculptures on the side of a hill there. I'm not sure which one that is, but that white mark there. Um, I know they are dotted around on this scenery, um, as in real world. I'm not sure exactly where that is, but um, that's what it looks like to me. Is it a horse or something? I don't know, I can't tell from this distance. Um, I still don't know what airfield that is. Obviously, I'd say probably military, only because of the way I can see a lot of the hangers there. So, I would say it could be fair for the, if I'm going on Sky Demon, Sky Demon is up to date. We're too far away for that to be Fairford. Um, Fairford should actually be over there. Uh, now, we have got some water coming, so. That there would be in between uh, Kemble and Fairford. And uh, actually, I think you can see Kemble very much so off in distance. That would actually match Sky Demon. So, I just don't know what that airfield is there. It's not a Sky Demon shot at all, so it might be. And again, because these are based, these airfields are based on very old information, it might be that that is a, a disused airfield now. Um, I will have to look that up though, I'm interested, because there is one with Rouser, uh, which is possibly where it is, I think, again, I think it's pronounced Rouser, but on Squadding it's disused now, whereas on this um, FSX it looks like it's an active airfield. Um, so anyway, right, let's pan back to the plane, internally. So, as you can see, and as you can probably see, actually, our VOR radio is slowly starting to come in as I predicted it would. So um, that is working. It's, it's just a good track, and we know we're 50 nautical miles on DMA. I think mean, that's really 44. We should be overhead the airfield. Good um, sky demon, we're actually nine miles out. So what we are going to do is start our descent um, to 
well, probably 2,000 feet initially, then down to 1,500 the circuit. And as you can see, actually, our NDB is just locked in, and that's actually pointing um, to Gloucester. Um, so that's actually just picked up as well. Um, so that'd be a direct track to Gloucester if we can follow that there. And so, right, let's turn auto that off. Let's turn that off. Let's take control of this. What I'm going to do is bring the power back a bit. I'm just going to put a bit of card heat. Just start our descent down to 2,000 feet. Slow drift down. No rush to get any air in this. And we're starting to line up. You'll probably see I'm offsetting here. Um, I'm just trying to start to line up for a very rough downwind join. Um, and the hope is again I can plot this onto Sky Demon, so we know it's left of the circuit. Join downwind, and there we are. That's we are pretty much as I predicted, pointing correctly for a downwind join. So we'll carry on now. So we know when we get to that, we need to uh, be at 15, well, 1450 feet on the QH. Um, now, one of the difficult things with approaching from this direction is we've actually got quite a sharp right hand turn there to join the circuit, um, which actually isn't ideal, and this is where. We could obviously fly a slightly different direction and join from a different way, or this is where the overhead join comes in because you can actually position your aircraft uh, differently to make the join easier. Uh, a lot of people don't like overhead joins, I do quite like them, but um, yeah, it, again, each to their own. There we are, so we're going down to 2,000 feet. So, what I'm going to do is put the carpet back in again. Just a little end boost. And we're approximately, sorry, three miles to the downwind now. So, I'm actually going to start doing my aircraft checks. Now, we'll actually continue my uh, descent as well. So, brakes are off that spread, so the brakes down, which is rich, fuel pump. Is going on and fuel is sufficient and running. I am actually going to stay on the left hand tank just because of the way we've actually flown this journey. Um, car beat is going on, instruments are all set and aligned. That's great. Let's check the QH again, that's fine on this. Um, hatches and harnesses are all secure, right? We are all set for landing. So we know um, here that. Um, Drift off quite a bit there, just doing those checks. So, again, but this will actually give us a slightly easier turn um, for our uh, downwind join. Um, so, I am offsetting this. So, there's our circuit height there. So, we want to start to level off now. We said 1450 feet. The airfield, airspeed rather, 100 knots, that's absolutely fine because we all want to be putting some flaps in soon and we want to make sure that we don't go below that 1450. Just a little bit of trimming, obviously as we keep the nose up, the plane will lose a bit more airspeed. Very close to our turn now, so I'm actually start turning now. I'm actually skirting the ATZ. I want to 
switch our height, make sure we hold the 1450. So, slightly closer than I would like to be uh, for this. So about 1450. So again, it's what we're going to do. Just track this out slightly. Yeah, that 1450 back. So one of the first things we're going to do is put on the stage of flaps. I always like to put one stage in, um, kind of rock late down mid, down mid. Um, so brakes are off, I'm going to go down, which is rich fuel pump, it's on, can't be to any transport set. Ninja T's and P's are all okay, that's great. Um, 14 50, which you can print as well. Okay, we'll Six. So again, theory, we could actually miss this round. Not drifting, which is a bit of two six. I'm very roughly that will match up. Two six one I'll do for this. So, so over my two six. So we should be fine about a zero eight zero on this leg. It's fourteen fifty still. So approximately forty five degrees to be. That's how it's very rough. So we'll start our turn to base. Should be avoiding the village of Kemple, but um, I think that's the village there. I think what? No, it might be that there. I think it's that one there, actually. So this is where our, our kind of dog leg join, as I'll call it. So again, we're going to keep this turn coming round to avoid that as best we can. There, so no other stage of flaps, that's fine. So, this way we want to get the airspeed down now because we want an approach speed of 75. So, brought the air RPM right back, but holding the nose up, which will bleed the speed. So, there's 75. And I've obviously got our dog leg joint now for this abatement. So we can start our turn to final. As you can see, we're very high now. Um, but is what we'll do. We'll just completely cut the power. Now we could side slip here, um, S turns, so forth and so on. Um, we've lost our airspeed a bit, but I said we're going to put our final stage of flaps in. That will introduce some extra drag. And again, we're just going to slow it right out. So we've got our airspeed back now. Obviously, by just killing the power completely, has introduced um, a very quick decrease in our altitude. So you can see we're down to 70. So, right, so now we should be picking our touchdown point. So, again, this is a bit, so it looks like the line just after 26, luckily. So, bring that. That there, so just uh, due to the end of the runway. Watch the airspeed for the drop off because we don't want to drop it in. We're floating a little bit, but we can just start bringing the power off. There we are, and we have touched down. I said the centre line holding there wasn't great, but uh, it's a big runway, so um, again, for a GA pilot, it gives you a little bit of. Um, leeway so now is what we're going to do is taxi um, to the tower which is over there um, and they have a lovely cafe here so we'll go and grab a drink um, and then probably park up for the night before 
doing the fight to Gloucester and Nana approach and gives us a chance to fix our GNS 430 as well. Once we vacate the runway as well, is what I would do, just don't want this here. Is we can do our after landing checks as well. So we should have the active runway lines here. Now bring ourselves to a complete stop. Probably we should go a little bit further forward. Just to make sure we're over them. I don't know what we'll do. So, so what we'll do is bring the flaps up, set the car heat cold, fuel pump can go off, trimmers you can normally set to neutral. neutral. Also we turn our strobe light off. Um, that one there. We'd also set our squawk to standby. And that is everything. So let's taxi to parking. I do really like Kembla's an airfield. Um, I've visited quite a few times. It's very nice. Um, the air traffic control law, FISO, really helpful, really nice people. Uh, yeah, definitely worth a visit if you uh, have your pilot's license. In fact, if you haven't got your pilot's license, um, and it's said they've got a lovely cafe, so you can just go and watch the planes. Bring this round and we will park into it as best we can. There we are, we'll stop there. There we are, we're clear, except for slightly yeah, to everyone else, but they are static aircraft, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's put the parking brake on. So we're not going to start driving off, so now we're parked in, we're parked into wind, parking brake is on, we're going to set the throttle to 1200. Operate each in. Magneto, that's fine, that's both, shut down the radios, that's the radio off, That's off. Um, let's turn the rotating beacon off. That's all okay. And last but not least is the master switch. And welcome to Kemble. There we are. Great flight again. As I said we had a couple of issues, um, probably introduced by myself and playing with the GNS in flight. Um, but um, as you can see, we're still able to complete a successful flight. Um, and had a really good time as well. So thank you.